If you're able this morning, if you could stand with me, we're just going to read one verse out of Proverbs 27. We're going to read Proverbs 27, verse number 8 this morning. Proverbs 27, verse number 8, it says, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Let's pray this morning, and then we'll get into this. Lord, I'm just grateful to be here. Lord, I'm excited about the Spirit in this room this morning. Lord, we know that the church is made up of uh, Christians. Lord, it's not the place that we meet, but Lord, I'm thankful for a place to meet. I'm thankful for a country that we're still able to meet in places like this. Open up your word. Lord, I just pray this morning you pour out your spirit on us. Lord, empty me of myself this morning. I pray whatever I say be only what we need to hear from you this morning. Let it not be, not be Daniel, Lord, but let it be you. Lord, thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Lord, continue to bless this church. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You know, it's interesting, uh, growing up as a somewhat, I guess you could say, spirited young man, uh, enthusiastic, uh, excitable, maybe a little energetic at times. <laughs> uh, I actually didn't know my dad was going to be here this morning, um, so I need to take out all the parts where I talk bad about him. <laughs> Um, but there was a phrase that would come into play um, throughout my childhood. Many of you are familiar with this. I'm sure you may have heard it. If you're parents, you have probably said it, and it's just, stay put. <laughs> stay there. Right? Especially when they're this age. Amen. Just just stay still. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Amen. In our house, we have a two-story house in Kansas. And uh, at times we'll be getting ready in the morning to leave, and I'll put my son on the stairs, and I'll say, just stay there, we're leaving soon. Because if I don't say that, as soon as I say we're leaving, he's going to go find a monster truck. Okay, that's just how he is, monster trucks all over the place. We bought some monster trucks the other day, didn't we, buddy? Okay, but it's a lot of, uh, of fun at this age, but just the idea of just stay put. Stay put. And we'll get into that kind of verse number 8 here. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. You know, a bird uh, uh, builds a nest, don't they? Usually. A lot of birds do. We had a, a bird make a nest on our little back patio uh, two years ago, actually. We didn't know what to do with it, so we just left it there until the bird flew away. Hey, but here in this uh, image, we see as a bird that wandereth from her nest. A nest is a lot of things to a bird. Right? A, a nest is, is a few things we'll look at this morning, the aspects of what this nest could be. Uh, but understanding the idea of just staying put, when you think of a bird that wanders from her nest, she's opening herself up to a lot of things. Typically, why does a bird build a nest? Safety. Okay. Warmth, protection, protection <laughs> a place to lay eggs, right? Usually a nest is involving some type of home type environment, right? They want to have their, their eggs put there. Okay, we can think of those little birds uh, maybe as something that needs to mature, something that needs to grow, something that needs to uh, um, uh, uh, develop into something else, and we'll look at that a little bit. But in the nest, understand this this morning, we get protection from. Right? We get protected from. In the book of Psalms, chapter number uh, uh, 46, I'll, I'm going to be in a few verses. You don't have to turn with me to all of them. But Psalms 46, verse number 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Amen. Amen. A, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Right? God is our refuge. Understand the protection that comes. There's, there's a lot of different types of protections that we can get, especially as a Christian this morning. I'm hoping this morning, uh, I pray this morning, I hope that everybody in here knows Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. I understand, though, even in a group uh, as small like this, uh, there could be somebody. Amen. I don't know. The person sitting next to you doesn't know for sure. Right. Only you know. Right? We can make assumptions, obviously. But assumptions are a very dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. That's a different sermon. Okay? But in our nest, we get protected from it. And we can look at things like mental harm. We get protected from mental harm. It's, it's an interesting uh, idea when you think of uh, uh, mental health and things like that. 
uh, people oftentimes like to push them to the side, but they're a very present thing. Right? Isaiah uh, 26, verse number 3 says, That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Amen. He's going to keep our minds, right? He's, he's showing us, listen, at times in our life, somebody could get to a point, and maybe you've been there where you say, I am just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. There's too much going on, right? Just this year alone, uh, we lost our senior pastor. He passed away. Uh, many of our deacons have been in and out of town. Um, just last night, uh, early this morning, about 3.30, we got word that our pastor's wife passed away. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so much is going on, and there's so much uh, in our church, the, the talking and the, and the discussions. And, but if we keep our minds on Christ, Amen. if we just stay put in the nest where we're supposed to be, he says, I'm going to keep your mind at perfect peace. Second Corinthians uh, this morning, chapter number uh, 10, let me get here. 2 Corinthians 10, we can see in verses uh, 3 through 5, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after flesh. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds, Amen. casting down imaginations. Right, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything Amen. that we're thinking, everything that we're going through, we have to lay it at God's right. When we stay where we're supposed to be, we are protected from things like mental harm. Hallelujah. You know, he was talking uh, about uh, Daniel this morning. It's interesting. Uh, Daniel chapter number four, actually, I flipped there while you were uh, teaching this morning. Sorry about that. Um, I forgive you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> but Daniel chapter number four, this story came to mind, and Daniel is basically uh, pleading with Nebuchadnezzar. You have to change your ways, buddy. You, you need to repent. You need to get right. You need to, to figure out what's going on. And what happens is he gives them about this 12-month span of time, and he says, at the end of this, watch out. Right, you, you know, everything has a time. Amen. And it's interesting to note, Nebuchadnezzar obviously was not a man of God, and unfortunately there was no repentance in his heart. And what happens in this story, as, as they begin to go through it, and uh, for sake of time I won't read it, but he gets turned, right, into this uh, a beast of the field, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, verse number three, I'll just read a few of them. He says, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, talking to Nebuchadnezzar. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven uh, times shall pass over thee until thou knowest the Most High ruleth in our kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. He says, Listen, Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to go a little nuts. <laughs> you're going to be on your hands and knees out in the field. Right? You're, you're, you're going to be eating the grass. And then all of a sudden, right after this time had spanned, verse number 36 in chapter 4, Daniel says, At the same time my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. Isn't this interesting? Somebody who does not trust God when he's put to and the truth is displayed to him, he gets to a point, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, I praise and I extol and I Amen. honor the king because he understood the proper place to be. Amen. Amen. He got to the nest. We can see in our nest we're protected from physical harm. I mean, keeping in line with Daniel, we can see uh, uh, so often, I mean, I think of just the first chapter of Daniel as uh, the Babylonian Empire comes in and besieges the kingdom there, right? And they, they begin to take the children. I, I, I think of the safety that was placed on Daniel in that situation. Yeah. I mean, uh, God knew what he had in store for Daniel. He understood the path that he had laid out for his life. And because Daniel was in the place he was supposed to be. Amen. Even at that younger age, we can see Daniel was following God. He purposed in his heart. It says later in chapter number one, after he was taken, I think of his family members who lost their lives. I, I think of the, the, the difficult things that took place around Daniel. But he kept uh, his faith and he kept safe. From physical harm, he was protected. I think of the many times we read about Paul. 
right, being stoned, or the apostles getting thrown in jail, and all of the harm that did come to them. But overall, listen, God kept them exactly where they needed to right. be. Amen. Because they were in the nest, so to speak. Right? We can see a, a protection from spiritual harm. If we stay where we're supposed to be, especially as Christians this morning, we are kept from spiritual harm. Be sober, 1 Peter 5, 8 says. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Right? I understand this morning, Satan's just looking for you. That's right. He's Amen. looking for the opportunity to, to, to wiggle his way into your life when we're where we're supposed to be. Say, I can miss church uh, when I want to. I just received a text not too long ago from an individual who said, I'm going to stay home and spend time with the Lord, just myself and the Lord this morning. I was like, a Sunday morning, you should be in church. Amen. There, there, there's, there's a place we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to forsake the assembling of ourselves. Amen. Yeah, God says where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of not me alone with God. Amen. Understand God is with us always. Yes. But there's a, a, a place that we're supposed to be. Satan's looking for that opportunity. He's walking around. Right? He's looking for the individuals who are slipping away from their place. Amen. A lion doesn't sit and attack the whole herd. Amen. He waits for one of them to stray away. He doesn't just walk up saying, I'm going to get you. <laughs> no, he waits. And, and he's lurking. And he's being creepy about it. Right? I'm going to get you. <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden, this one comes up. Maybe that guy says, I'm going to go eat the grass that's greener on the other side. <laughs> right? I'm going to go over here because there's just something new about this area. It seems better over here. We have to be careful this morning Amen. to stay in the nest. Isaiah 41, verse number 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise the Lord. Listen, if we want to get to a place in our life where we're fully committed and fully trusting and fully following God, we have to stay where we're supposed to be. Amen. That's serving, following God. Deuteronomy 33, verse number 27 says, The eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath are the everlasting arms. I love that. Amen. Underneath are the everlasting dawn, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Hey, I got you, he's saying. I got you just like a mother bird is going to be there to protect her little ones in the nest. Amen. Just like she's going to be uh, able to uh, ward off certain things that might try to harm her little ones. God's saying, I'm going to be there from you, you know, um, as a lost individual understanding uh, uh, how this world works and, and, and knowing uh, the loss and their, how they're blinded to the things of God and, and how uh, um, Christ still, through all of that, came to save, right? Mm -hmm. But God. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because even as a lost individual, we need to understand God offers protection from. Amen. Right? He offers us protection from the wrath of sin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing when a lost person understands and we're able to reach them with the gospel of Christ that they can understand uh, uh, this morning listen there is protection available lost person potentially here this morning there's protection available when we're in our place when we're in God amen right uh, um, Romans chapter 5 verse number 12 uh, pastor Josh just read it this morning right so wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Right? Now, understanding that sin is a very present and it's a very uh, uh, um, immediate need to be dealt with. Amen. Right? He said that the time is short. We don't know when Christ is coming back. We don't know when his return is. But understanding because of his sacrifice, mm -hmm. we can be protected from Amen. when we're in our place, the wrath of sin. Number two, this morning, we're not just protected from in the nest, we're also provided for in the nest. Praise we're provided for in the nest. I love uh, um, the idea of being provided for. Amen. Amen. My Amen. wife cooks for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and she laughs at me when I try to cook. Amen. <laughs> she just joked about that with my brother and sister-in-law the other day, and I said, how dare you? <laughs> I can cook things. I remember when we were dating 
she was coming over one of the first meals I was going to make for us. Box macaroni and cheese. <laughs> okay. Growing up and, and, and understand this, we don't make box macaroni and cheese. Uh -uh. She never made box macaroni and cheese. So here I am, and I'm looking at the box. I'm like, okay, ingredients, water, milk, butter, noodles. I'm like, I didn't even boil the water. <laughs> everything was just in there. And I'm like, I got everything going. What am I missing? She's like, you didn't even cook the noodles. <laughs> Provided for. Amen. Where would I be? I was just telling Tristan earlier. I was like, Tristan, he's like, you are exactly the same. I was like, I'm a little bit heavier, man. Yeah. This shirt used to fit me a little bit better. Okay? We are provided for. John 14, verses 13 and 14, it says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Yes. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Understand that this morning. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you shall ask anything in my name. Praise I'll God. Do it. Amen. Wow, that, that's such an amazing passage right there, just understanding God is willing, God is able, and, and God wants to Amen. provide for us. Mm -hmm. If we're where we're supposed to be, He provides for our needs. Mm -hmm. He provides for our needs when we're in the midst. Philippians 4, verse number 19 says this, it says, but my God, underline those words, <laughs> hey, my God, if you're a Christian this morning, understand, your God, mm -hmm. Amen. right, yes. but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches Amen. and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank God it's not based on my riches. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank God it's not based on uh, my achievements or, or my well doings. It's based on what he has and he owns a battle. Cattle on a thousand. He, he walks streets of gold. Amen. He has gates of pearl. Mm -hmm. My God provides our needs. He provides for our desires. Yes. You know, God wants to give you what you want. Yeah. He, he wants to actually provide for your desires this morning. I enjoy uh, the book of Psalms and just going through the different uh, uh, things that David speaks about. In Psalm 37, uh, verse number 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. Amen. And, what? and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He, he just doesn't he doesn't want to just provide for what you need he wants to provide for what you want right, yes. but it's interesting because uh, sometimes you don't know what you want mm. Amen. right you, you don't know what you want uh, until you get what you need mm. Mm -hmm. you know it, it's very interesting um, with my parents being here <laughs> there was a lot of years in my life as a saved individual that I ran from God. I, I, I didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, uh, there were some people in the church, uh, maybe not even to your knowledge, I, I just didn't agree with them. I didn't understand that way of thinking. Such hypocrites. How dare there be hypocrites in the church? <laughs> how, how dare there be sinners in the church, right? Yeah. And, and I had all of these wants and these wishes for my life that didn't line up with what God had. Yeah. What he planned for my life. You know, uh, so often in life, we have a desire, and we say, Lord, this is what I want, Lord, this is what I want, Lord, this is what I want, and that's how we pray. Yes. This is what I want, Lord, amen. I prayed today. <laughs> hey, hey, Lord, this is what I want, and he's saying, listen, you, you don't even have about you what you really need. Amen. Right, there, there was a time I had to return and repent of my sins, fall on my face, so to speak, say, Lord, I, I done messed up. Mm -hmm. I, I need you. And he says, man, and he's going to shift the desires of your heart geared towards what his plan for you is. Mm -hmm. God wants to provide for our desires. Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8 says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Praise Amen. Lord. When you're in the will of God. When you're striving and seeking God in your life, He wants to provide for your needs and your desires, and He wants to provide for your cares, for the things that you care about. You know, First Peter, uh, oftentimes when we go to chapter number 5, people always assume we're going to the lion verse. Mm -hmm. But First Peter chapter number 5 has other good verses too. Verse number 7 actually says, all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. 
He, he wants you to understand this morning, Christian or lost person, He cares for you. He, he wants you to understand He offers protection from things in your life, but He wants you to understand where you're, where you're supposed to be, He's going to provide for the things that you care about. Amen. When you care about something, when you're concerned about something, that's what we bring to God most often. And most often that's what He wants to provide for us. He wants to provide uh, the forgiven life for us. Right? He wants to provide uh, this ability to come before him, call him at the Father. Mm-hmm. After acceptance of him as our Lord and Savior, he wants us to fall on our, our knees and just thank him for who he is. <clears throat> right? We have to understand all have sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God this yeah. morning. But that offer uh, of uh, of uh, um, Salvation of eternal life is available because he's provided the way. Mm-hmm. He's provided the way. Mm-hmm. He offers protection from, he <coughs> provides for, and when we stay in the nest, that's where potentials form. When, when we're where we're supposed to be, when we're serving God, when we're uh, living our Christian life, potentials begin to form. If my son is where he's supposed to be, what does that mean? He's learning appropriately. He's eating appropriately. He's doing the things that he's supposed to be doing as he grows, as he matures. Right? Potentials are forming in his life. <coughs> as a, a Christian, I can understand that God uh, offers uh, me uh, abilities. Right? We understand the spiritual gifts. That God offers to every believer. Your spiritual gift is different than my spiritual gift, potentially. We could have some of the same uh, aspects of some of the other gifts, but God gives us at the moment we receive Him as our Savior. I'm giving you the ability, Christian, now, someone who has trusted me as their uh, Lord and Savior, I'm giving you the ability to serve me to your full potential. I'm giving you the potential to bring me the glory and honor that is deserved. I'm giving you this, Philippians 4.13, right? Uh, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, that ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Listen, when, when the potential, when the understanding that Christ has come, when he uh, 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 laid down that suffering, his, his gift, his uh, uh, um, laying down of his life on the cross, I can rejoice in that. I, I, I can take a, a, a heart to that. God calls those men and women who are serving him. Amen. He wants you to be where you're supposed to be. Say, I, I'm just a, a laborer. I, I'm just a, a fast food worker. I don't know what you do this morning. I, I'm just this type of individual. But if you're where God has intended for you to be, there's great potential That's for right. you. Mm-hmm. Making those little cutie. Curly cues at the top of Dairy Queen ice cream. <laughs> I did that in high school. <laughs> Listen, Noah was a righteous man before God. And because of his faithfulness to God, he had him build an ark. Mm-hmm. Daniel, man, talk about Daniel. Daniel was a, a faithful young man. And because of that man, he was raised up in the kingdom. Yes. Man, Joseph, because of his faithfulness... He was raised every aspect, Potiphar's house, even through slavery, even through everything that he went through, imprisonment, second in command of Egypt. Amen. Potentials are formed when we follow God, but they form in time. You know, uh, just because I think I have potential to do something doesn't mean the moment I accept Christ as my Savior, I can go do it. Right. <laughs> And there are young people uh, uh, all across America who are saying, I think I am called to the ministry. Right? There are camps all over. I, every uh, summer we take a group of teenagers uh, to different camps uh, across our nation. We've been to Colorado, we've been to Tennessee, we've been to Florida even. Right? And, and we take these long drives. Why? Because I want them to realize there's potential for them. Mm-hmm. I, I want them to understand that, but it happens in time. Right, a high schooler who says, I feel called to the ministry, is it going to go start a church tomorrow? Mm-hmm. It happens in time, in God's time. Amen. First Peter 5, in verse number 6, actually, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Why? That he may exalt you in due time. Amen. When the time is right, when, when he so deems fit for you to be placed into whatever position he has for you, that's when... God's going to move. That's when. And we have to just be patient and wait. Be in the nest. Be 
where we're supposed to be. Galatians chapter number 6, verse number 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As long as we continue, as long as we strive, as long as we're wanting God to be present and us to be following Him in our lives in due time, that's when we reap. That, that's when we see the growth. That's when we see the maturity. That's when we see uh, the people around us that we're serving, that we're able to work with in due time. Amen. Potentials form in our commitment. In our commitment. When we are committed to God. Pardon my, my little notes here. My wife was getting mad at me this morning. You need sticky notes. Okay, <laughs> Psalms, Psalms 37, verse number 5, it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. When we're committed, when we're trusting in him, when, when we want to do what God wants us to do, Right now at our church, we're going through um, the process of uh, me and my wife becoming the next pastor and pastor's wife. So uh, in this situation, the deacons are sitting down with us, they're meeting with us, they're interviewing us, all of these things. And they say, well, do you feel called to be a pastor? And I say, no. <laughs> and they say, wait, wait, what? And I say, well, I never felt called to be a youth pastor either, and I've been doing that for five years. They say, wait, what? I said, I never felt called to be an assistant pastor. But I did that in our last church. What What are you talking I was like, let me explain this. I was like, I'm called to the ministry. Amen. I'm called to serve God. Amen. I like, from the moment I knew it was going to be something we could say ministry geared towards this type of, uh, lack of better words, platform. Okay, but I, I explained it to them in the sense that, listen, God has called me to serve him. Amen. If it's a missionary, so be it. If it's an evangelist, so be it. If it's a pastor, praise God. I'll do Amen. it. Amen. And we have peace about that right now. We prayed, we sought God, and that's important in our commitments that we seek Him. I remember uh, weed eating this parking lot. <laughs> Every week, Pastor Cisco had me out there weed eating the parking lot. And weed eating the parking lot. And then I would weed eat the parking lot because it's a big parking lot. And I remember when we were uh, being led to the church that we're serving in now, and uh, I said, God, there's no way. There's no way, for one, I don't want to move to Kansas. I lived in Kansas for uh, early childhood. I just don't like uh, the humidity. Right? I, I don't like tornadoes. Right? Uh, I don't want people to be like, well, you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. You know? I, I, just, I just don't want it. And yes, I've heard that since we've been here. Okay? No, I'm not here. But, and, and it's interesting because I'm out there weed eating. I'm like, well, okay, beyond my selfish, I just don't want to. Lord, we can't afford it. I, I'm an associate pastor. I, I went full time at this church. My salary got cut over 50%. Right? We had a, a brand new baby. I mean, we were we were tight. And I said, God, there's no way. There, there's, there's just no way, but I want to do what you will have me. Yes. And I get a phone call. I was going towards the towards baseline. I was down a long stretch. <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the right side, right? I, I, guess, I, was, I was just past halfway to the street there, and my phone rings, and I turn off the weed and I say, yeah, hello. This is so-and-so from Elm Grove Baptist. That's the church that we're serving in now. He said, listen, um, we, we want to officially call you to serve in our church. He said, okay. He said, we're going to completely pay for your, your U-Haul. We're going we're gonna to pay for the hotel. We're going to pay for your meals. We're going to pay for everything to get you out here. Mm -hmm. I hang up the phone and said, okay, Lord, but I can't afford to get a place when we get there. I'm going to need a deposit. I mean, how am I supposed to save now? They're going to plan to move us out within a month. I mean, it, it happened quick. I was like, how in the world? And I get the call. I was coming back. <laughs> right? And it was her grandmother. She said, listen, I have a two-bedroom apartment in my basement. You can stay there for as long as you need. Right? And God just provided and provided Amen. and provided. And in the time of commitment, mm -hmm. the potential now to potentially be a pastor. Mm. It's a humbling thing to think about, but understanding God wants to if we commit our way into the Lord. Amen. Amen. Where we're supposed to be, you know, potentials form in faith. Amen. Our potentials form in our faith. Yes. Right in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, right, the heroes of faith chapter. And, and we can go through pretty much uh, this entire book, but we can see, right, uh, Hebrews 11, verse number 4, by faith, 
Verse number 5, by faith. Verse number 7, by faith. Verse number 8, by faith. Verse number 17, by faith. 20, 21, 22, 23. Verse number 31. You say you skipped a few. I know, but they're usually the same characters. Right? <laughs> Understand, by faith, all of these men, understanding their role in Christ, what God had intended for them to do, the potential came in their faith. Amen. Because they were willing to trust God. They wanted to seek God. They wanted to do what he intended for them to do. And because of that, God used them. There's such potential for Christians. Say, I don't have any potential. You have one of the best potentials available, and that's leading someone else to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Leading someone else to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no greater potential that we have. Glacian. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter number 5, verses 13 and 14 says, For brethren, we have been called unto liberty, only not, or use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Amen. Right? For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. Listen, there's potentials forming when we're in the will of God, when we're where we're supposed to be, to serve him. Mm -hmm. Amen. To serve him. And it comes in time. It comes in commitment. It comes in our faith. And when that happens, when it takes place, right? we have to understand we're, we're not motivated uh, by our love necessarily. Uh, we become, uh, when we're not motivated by our love, we become very critical of other people. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to understand uh, where our love is stemmed from. And, and, and Paul was distinguishing this right in, in Galatians here. And he, he says, listen, uh, between freedom to sin and, and freedom to serve, there's this, this gap. And, and freedom to sin is, is no freedom at all. Amen. I mean, we can look in, in previous uh, books of uh, the New Testament and it talks about uh, uh, our slavery to sin. We were enslaved to sin. We were bound, Galatians uh, chapter 5 uh, verse number one, I believe, that we're bound by sin. Amen. We're no longer to be that individual. Amen. And because of all this, and the enslavery to <coughs> Satan that we have, right? The, the, this flesh that we are in is, is not uh, um, understanding a, a reference in Galatians 13 here. I'll read it again. For brethren, ye have not been called into liberty, but use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh. Right? To the flesh, but by love serve one another. Right? The, the flesh is not re referring uh, to the body, but to a, a sinful nature in us. And, and the sinful nature in us is attempting to use our bodies to lead us to sin. But when we're committed, when we're staying put, when we're where we're supposed to be in God, we can see this clear evidence that He, when we're in our nest, we are protected from things. Yes. When, when we're in our nest, Understand the analogy. When we're where we're supposed to be in God, we are provided for. Amen. Maybe when we're where we're supposed to be in God, potentials form. Amen. But they come in time. Be patient. That's why he says, wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? This isn't, uh, and I'm sure you've heard this uh, throughout your Christian life. I pray you have. Hey, but I understand uh, uh, when we are waiting on God, it's like a waiter at a restaurant. Right? It's not just me sitting there twiddling my thumb saying, God, anytime you want. God, anytime that you see fit, you know, I'm just sitting here waiting for you. No, it's a waiting in the sense that uh, uh, of a waiter, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you a refill. I'm going to get you uh, your meal. I'm going to get you what you need. I'm going to be able to, to, to help you out. But it's not necessarily that God needs our help, but he's wanting us to be committed. Mm -hmm. He's wanting us to be faithful. Mm -hmm. And he's wanting us to serve. Yes, right. That's right. That's right. You know, in Second Samuel, chapter number 11, it says, And it came to pass, right, after the year was expired, verse number 1, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Amnon and besieged Rabbi. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. I understand what's taking place here. It came to pass during this year span at the time when kings go forth to battle. This is when the kings go out. Amen. This is what they do. Listen, you're a king, you're going to battle. And when the time came that the kings go forth to battle, the end of verse number one, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. 
Amen. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. Amen. And, and what began to take happen? This is the start of the David and Bathsheba story. Amen. Right? Because he wasn't in battle, he went up to his rooftop. Because he wasn't where he was supposed to be, he laid eyes on Bathsheba in the back. Right? Because he was where he's supposed to be, he began to have lustful desire for her. He called for her. He, he slept with her. He impregnated her. Because of this, he began to bring himself, I can only imagine, the mental harm that came with him. Right? I, I'm sure at times there, there could have been physical pain that came along with that. Oh, a worrisome uh, anguish. Right? I, I'm sure at times there was great spiritual harm because he drifted away from God. Amen. Right? You understand he wasn't being provided for in that time. And great uh, disappointments began to come into his life. Listen, when, when all of this was taking place in David's life, his potential as the king of Israel no. I mean, think of everything that stemmed from that relationship, the children that he had. They, they, think of uh, uh, the upset in the family. Think of everything. He went from having a lustful desire because of not being in the place that he was supposed to be to having some of his closest men murdered, to committing uh, an affair, to, to, to having all of this troublesome until he got right with God. Listen, this morning, I understand your need to be where you're supposed to be. When that mother bird flies from her nest, she opens herself up to great travesty. I mean, outside the tree, that's where the hunters are. That, that, that's where the weather is. That, that's, where, that, that's where the difficulty lies. Hey, the husbands, think about it. Stay where you're supposed to be, meaning what? Listen, two are greater than one. Yeah. Right, we can understand that. Right? Two are greater than one, but two are greater than one that causes a lot of trouble, too. Mm -hmm. Know your friends. Know who you're hanging out with. Yes. Man, Pastor Josh said it this morning. Man, it's good to be around the people of God. Amen. I love hanging out with my church friends. Mm -hmm. I love coming to town and getting to hang out with my church friends. Mm -hmm. It's exciting and, it, and it's encouraging. And as a husband, we have to be able to understand when we start to drift from our nest, our place as a husband, what happens? Just like David, we open ourselves up to trouble. Amen. Man, our, our, our society is a wicked place. Yes, it is. They, they want nothing more than to throw pornography and to throw a, 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 a adulterous thoughts into your mind. Amen. That's all they want to do. I mean, think of some of the shows that are on Netflix and Hulu and all of those other things. Are there good shows on there? Well, sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, but there are a lot of bad shows out there. Yes. Right? And, and we get to get this idea of, of, well, it's okay to go to the bars. And it's okay to hang out with ungodly people. And it's okay to make dirty jokes. And it's okay to look at women. I'm just looking. Be careful. Be careful. Right. Why? The same situation. Right? When, when you begin to drift away, hey, they, they cater to the women just as much as the men nowadays. Right? And everything is geared towards drawing you into a sinful environment. Amen. Yeah. Understand where to be in our nest. Because what? Because of the, as the bird that wandereth from her nest, Proverbs 7, verse number 8. As the bird that wandereth from her nest, so is the man. <laughs> Let me get to the right spot. So is the man that wandereth from his way. Right? I understand it was 27 not the episode. Right. Understand as a Christian this morning, we are to be where God has intended for us to be. And how do we yeah. get there? Trusting in Him, following Him, praying, seeking Him for our lives. Yes. We can't just show up to church on Sunday and expect God to use you for great and mighty things. He needs you Monday through Saturday. Too. Amen. Right? We, we have to be willing, especially if you're lost in here this morning, to understand Christ gave Himself for you. Why? So He can pour out an abundant life on you. He, he wants to give you everything that you need in life. Man, what, what greater thing is that to understand as somebody when you get into a relationship and they provide for everything that you're looking for, everything that you need, everything that you long for. Right? Think of it as a child, and, and their, their, their parents are able to provide everything that they need, everything that's inside. Man, it's a, a, there's not, not a happier place to be. God wants us to be in the nest. He wants us to be where we're supposed to be. Amen. That's in his will. Let's pray this morning, and then uh, Pastor Josh, you can do what you need. Lord, I'm just thankful for your opportunity to stay in here this morning.